Welcome back to Business and um, my name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiaga. You're watching Metropole Television. This is your premier 24 7 business channel within Eastern Central Africa. Good. Let's have a talk about pertinent issues that we actually set aside for this part of our conversation this morning. This morning, I want us to get down and talk about tourism. And we don't know exactly what the government has projected tourism growth to be for the year 2019. Now, the tourism, the tourism sector actually projects a slump in the growth numbers of tourism in 2019. They're saying it's not that bad, but they're saying that we don't expect to knock on the 37 percentage level that we actually experienced in 2018. Good. And one of the issues that stand out when they give us that report is that local tourism is actually not that supportive of these numbers. Now, everybody knows that in the numbers of bookings that Kenya actually, for the very first time, crossed the 2 million mark, which was a good thing from 2018. But whether that is repeated in 2019 or for the remainder of 2019 will be left to the tourism companies within the Kenyan economy. And this morning, we are privileged to host one of a kind, Last Minute Mara. And we have the general manager in the studio, Nicole. Thank you very much for joining us here Thank on Metropole Television. Me. Welcome. Thank you. It's raining. That's a good thing with the Kenyan economy. Uh, it is, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we needed it. Anyway, for anybody looking at Last Minute Mara, the first one to understand, why the name Last Minute Mara? <laughs> Um, well, I think the, the reason we chose the name is because it, it pretty much shows what it is that we are doing. Yes. So Last Minute Mara, in a nutshell, who we are and what we do is we are a new booking platform yes. that allows people to book luxury safaris to the Masai Mara last minute entirely online. Last minute being 30 days. So anyone who is now looking to travel to the Masai Mara last minute, so with any day between today and the next 30 days, can go onto our website and book an all-inclusive safari package to the Masai Mara completely online. Yes, and I like the way you peg it on last minute. Mm -hmm. And that's, that seems to be a big selling point Absolutely. for your company. Mm -hmm. Is it these 30 days, how important are they really to the selling of your company? Um, well, they are, they are important. So obviously in, in you know, the tourism industry in, Nairobi, in, in Kenya is big yes. it's, and it's very competitive. Yes. There are so many tour operators and travel agents out there. So we wanted to really differentiate ourselves and how were we able to differentiate was to offer something that no one else in the market is offering. Mm -hmm. So by focusing on, on offering last minute deals only, we're also able to provide better value. Yes. To give you a little bit more explanation as to how we're able to do that is because no hotelier wants their bed to sit empty. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, a hotelier is more willing to sell their last minute inventory, in this case rooms and, and um, seats on airlines. Um, they're willing to, to, but to offer these prices much at a much lower cost um, because there is no one else who is going to book that last minute. Yes. So we basically partnered up with a number of different airlines and a number of different camps in the Mara and provide, basically created a marketplace, an online marketplace in which we match sellers and buyers. Yes. In this situation, the solution that we were offering to the, the airlines and to the camps is by giving them a marketplace in which they can make their last minute inventory more easily accessible to the Kenyan market who we see are more price sensitive and who are willing to, fo to forego booking far in advance. Yes. I, I like how you talk about it, this last minute thing and mm -hmm. actually matching inventory that people are actually willing to sell in the last mm -hmm. minute. Is it, was this informed within these 30 days and is that exactly what you found missing within this competitive yes, environment? Yes, absolutely. Maybe to give you a little bit more background yes. is because, so we created Last Minute Mara first and foremost to try and help deal with the seasonality issue that the Masai Mara is faced with. Yes. So when you look at the Masai Mara, basically outside of the migration which take place during three to four months of the year, the Mara is, is almost, I, I don't want to say is empty, but is obviously not as busy as during the migration months. Yes. So one of the things we realized is how can we try and boost um, 
visitors to the Masai Mara outside of that migration period. And what we figured, well, who travels extremely last minute is the Kenyan market. Kenyans are notoriously mm -hmm. well known for, for always booking very, very last minute. But if you give them a deadline, they will tell you to extend that deadline. Exactly. Yes. So we figured, I mean, why, why should... Um, why should the Kenyan market be penalized for booking last minute when the camps and hotels and airlines and everybody out there who's providing, you know, travel-related inventory, yes. why should they be penalized when these camps are also, and the hotels are also trying to fill their bets? Yes. So it was just about understanding how everybody in the industry works and, and creating a solution that is applicable for all of our stakeholders. Yes. That's a good thing, isn't it, that we're talking about the Mara as well. But just before we get there yes. and then see exactly what your whole experience is mm -hmm. pegged on, mm -hmm. I just want you to tell me who is your client, really, when we're talking about the Kenyan last-minute person mm -hmm. wants to experience Kenya but doesn't have all the luxury to go back and of come course. up with plans to travel. Of course. Yes. Well, I mean, our client... We, we don't have a very specific client in mind. Our mm. client is pretty much anybody. Anybody who wants to travel and who's willing to invest in traveling, yes. then this platform is for any person. Mm -hmm. So whether that be, first and foremost, is obviously the Kenyan market. So we're looking first and foremost at Nairobi residents. Yes. Reason being is because flights are out of Nairobi and it's just easier to, to, to give them to give our clients a full package from one destination. So we're looking first and foremost at the, as, at the resident market in, in Nairobi specifically. Yes. Then thereafter, anybody else who's looking to travel, this could be a Kenyan, like this could be an international business traveler. One of the things we noticed is there are a lot of business travelers coming into Nairobi on a daily basis for conferences or for whatever other purposes, and we're noticing that more and more of them decide to book a post or pre-conference tour, which means that once they're here, if if they don't have, you know, if they don't come to, to Kenya frequently, a lot of people, everyone knows Kenya for the safari industry. So a lot of the time, once people are here, they figure, well, why not go on a safari since I'm here? But that process is very, is very um, reactive in the sense that it's still a lengthy process and yes. someone isn't here for a long period of time where do they go and look for this information and this is the same for the resident market in that it's very difficult to find one place where you can go and find all of the camps that are in the Mara find the prices all at once so on and so forth yes. so it really is for anybody who's looking to travel and anybody who wants to go and visit the Masai Mara but is looking for a more effective way of doing so in terms of value for money and in terms of efficiency. Yes, let's start to talk about your business model because mm -hmm. I, I'm listening, I'm getting last minute, I'm talking about value for money. Mm -hmm. Since this is last minute booking, mm -hmm. and I, I would like to think as a, I'm traveling now yes. and actually use last minute in Mara to actually take me to these places, yes. what do I get in terms of my last, my value for money? Well, your value for money is, well, you're making savings. Yes. So obviously because we're dealing with last minute and the way, and we wanted to focus on last minute because this is how we could bring better value to our users. So that is, that is the first. So to give you an, a, a rough estimation, yes. currently with all the camps that we have on board, there are savings to, to be made between 30 to 70%. Of the of the normal of the normal per person of the rate normal, of the normal rate. yes and and this you can actually get since you you're, you're looking at the ones the the, the platforms mm -hmm. or the sellings mm -hmm. and bookings that are actually be sold last minute exactly and you're pegging that on the price factor exactly that since they're getting sold last minute then we actually get a price of these these exactly. bookings isn't it precisely yes all right let's therefore go and talk about Mara. Uh, everybody knows that when it comes to Mara, there's just one attraction that everybody wants to go mm -hmm. there, but it doesn't happen all the time. Absolutely. Why should I go to Mara then? Mm -hmm. Well, I think just to clarify, you are talking about the migration, yes. which is obviously what brings everyone to the yes. Masai Mara. But the Masai Mara is, you know, the Masai Mara is the jewel in Kenya's crown. It's really what put Kenya on the map when it comes to tourism, and it is yes. still the park that is the most visited in the world. So the Masai Mara, one of the reasons that makes the Masai Mara so special is just about the, um, the density of wildlife that is there. So if, if I remember the, the, the numbers correctly, whilst the Masai Mara represents only 0.50% of the land mass in Africa, yes. it, rep it actually is home to about 45% of the largest male species on the African continent. So 
basically, regardless of the time of year you actually go and visit the Mara, you're pretty much guaranteed to see your to see wildlife and almost every time will you see the big five. Yes. So really for the animal and wildlife lovers, the Masai Mara is really the place to go. Yes. And also just because of the vast expanse of plains and the wild and the landscape, sorry, of the Masai Mara, which is completely different to any of the other parks in Kenya, it really is so densely populated and it's easier to actually spot the animals because there's so much space. Yes. And so, it, yes. And sorry, go I, ahead. I, I listen to you and, 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 and ask myself, is this exactly even actually what informed the name for the company? Last yes. minute Mara. Exactly. Isn't so it? that's, that's yeah. where the name came from. It was mm -hmm. all about getting people to the Mara last minute. Yes. yes. All right. Let's start for talk about one of the biggest issues that actually happened within the Kenyan industry. I know this is a very competitive space. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. I mean, Absolutely. you go online, it doesn't take me a minute for me to find somebody who wants to take me somewhere. Yeah. Even today in the afternoon. I could. I could mm. land on somebody. Yes, you but now, could. What really matters is, since we are talking to the Kenyan population, mm -hmm. and we are not known that much for traveling and actually experiencing our nation as well, mm -hmm. how pertinent is accommodation to your plan? And do you think, therefore, that since you're selling last minute, you're, mm -hmm. you're pegging your model on the last minute sell-offs yes. that will come at discounts, mm -hmm. are we well supplied with accommodation in the Mara that Kenyans will actually go in and get it a discount? 100% yes. yes. Because at the end of the day, the Mara is, is actually very populated in terms of camps as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, I can't speak for everyone, but personally, my belief is that it's getting to a point where there are starting to be too many accommodations in the Mara. Yes. And there are more going up every day. And I guess, in a sense, that shows it's because there is demand for it, which means that there are so many people who want to go to the Mara. Yes. When you look at, um, for example, August, which is really peak season in the Mara, a lot of uh, the Mara was fully booked. You know, it was very difficult to find beds in the Mara because there were so many people traveling into Kenya to be able to experience the migration. So there is a lot of selection when it comes to the Mara. I mean, you have your extremely high-end camps, like you have your sort of mid-range, and then you also have your budget, and you also have camping options. Yes. So there really is something to suit every single need and every single desire, so yes. to speak. So mm -hmm. there's more than enough selection for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Your company attracts a lot of people, mm -hmm. and that's a factor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so if you're talking about last-minute traveling and that, that enables you to get to the Mara. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about ratios, because we have, we've actually been blamed for not supporting the tourism industry that yes. much. When talking about ratios, mm -hmm. what do you place Kenyans in terms of the uptake of your products? Well, we, we, we created this business really to target the Kenyan market and yes. to really focus on that market because it's true. Not a lot of people have been focusing on the resident market, yes. which I think is a little bit of the reason why the government has, has you know, predicted slumps next year. Mm -hmm. Because whilst... Um, Ken Kenyans do love to travel and we're seeing more and more Kenyans traveling. The only problem is that Kenyans are now traveling outside of Kenya or are traveling to the same destinations within Kenya, the coast being one of them. Yes. Um, and so I think this is one of the main problems is just educating the Kenyan population about what is available to them. We've seen that there's been a, pre a misconception that the Masai Mara and a lot of these lodges in the Masai Mara are really for the foreigners. Yes. And I think that's because for many, many years, um, a lot of these camps and just the tourism industry as a whole has really focused on targeting international travelers. So now when there are difficulties that happen in the country, because there is a misunderstanding of the African continent, first of all, as a whole, and then as Kenya as a separate one, what happens is a lot of people still misunderstand the information that comes out of Kenya or yes. the information that comes out of Africa. And because of this, whenever something negative happens in the country, the tourism industry is always impacted quite quite strongly, especially when it comes in um, with all the tourist ba with all the travel bans that are being placed by international um, by all the different countries. And so what happens is by ignoring the resident market, we simply, what happens when all these international travelers don't want to come to Kenya because they're, they're scared of whatever insecurities the, the media might be portraying. Yes. So because of that, I think it's very important that we start focusing on the resident market because they are here. They know what happens in the country. And as long as they are aware and have a better understanding of what is actually available to them, they will travel. Yes. Because we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of sorry, 
Kenyans traveling to countries such as South Africa and Dubai, and you can ask yourself why. And I think one of the main reasons is because a lot of these countries actually target the Kenyans in their marketing. They're actually telling them, come to our countries, this is what we have available. But we as Kenyans aren't doing the same things to our own people. Yes. So I think that is something that needs to change, and that is something we as Last Minute Mara are trying to do as well. Yes, which, which pretty much goes about about marketing when exactly. it comes to actually marketing our yes. country and the destinations. I was surprised the other day that I could go to Turkana and actually enjoy my the destinations mm -hmm. in Turkana yeah. that are well, well versed. But that aside though, so when it comes to the way in which that you sell your products, to have specific camps mm -hmm. that somebody go to and say, when I when I book a last minute Mara, mm -hmm. then I know that I'll get there. Yes. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if, if to give you a little bit more example as to how, how the whole platform works. So what happens is we've partnered with several camps and lodges yes. who want to be on our platform as well as airlines. So what happens is these camps are basically saying if you want to book last minute at a better rate, you can do so through last minute Mara. Nice. Because obviously now by, by completely automating the booking process, we're also cutting out the middleman in the sense that now um, whoever wants to book can do so directly on the platform within just a few clicks and within just a few minutes. Yes. So that means all they have to do is they go onto the website, they put in their travel dates given that it is within that 30 day window and they will then see which camps are available during the dates that they have specified. Yes. They then go select however number of people they're traveling with, if they want to stay in a double or a single room, they can add in if they have any dietary requirements or if they're traveling for a special occasion. They then add their park fees or conservancy fees. Then if they want, they can add flights from Nairobi. Yes. And then you pay for everything using your debit or credit card online. And as soon as you've paid, you receive your e-tickets and your booking voucher. Yes. So everything is done instantaneously. So it is only the camps with which we have partnered and the airlines that are available to be booked on the website. Yes. Nicole, th this is going to be the last question this morning because I'm getting told that 30 minutes are actually oh, expiring. Wow. Now, here's uh -huh. the thing, though. Now, the government is actually forecasting a slump mm -hmm. in the growth numbers of the tourism uh, industry mm -hmm. in 2019. They're saying, good, we hit our eyes in 37% last year, but they say, yes, we're not saying that we're experiencing a slump, mm -hmm. but the numbers ain't going to hit the 37 mm -hmm. percentage point. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? That, that tells you that that is how you have to position yourself Absolutely. in the in the market when mm -hmm. it comes to the tourism uh, industry. Yes. So paint for me the picture with these numbers, therefore, where do we expect, and I'm going to give you a very short term mm -hmm. answer for you to paint me a picture for the next two years for last minute more. Well, I think focusing on domestic is the way forward. I mean, with the, with the, with the rising middle class, there yes. is more money in Kenya yes. to be spent. Mm -hmm. And I think if we focus on people who are already here, and not only Kenya, but on East Africa or on the African continent as a whole. Yes. There are a lot of people who want to come to Kenya and experience that authentic safari you know, experience. So I think by focusing on the resident market, by focusing on East Africa and really showing people what is available to them, and, and you know, the East Africans already have more benefit in the sense that park entry fees are cheaper for Kenyans and East Africans in comparison to non to non-residents. Yes. Um, so that's already one thing that's in place, but I think really focusing and pushing and educating people what is available to them and making Kenyans feel that this is just enough, as, as much for them as it is for foreigners, then that's, that allows us to bring a whole new market on board, which is a market that hasn't been explored that much. Yes. Yeah. Mikhail, thank you very much for coming to thank the Thank you so much. Television. It's been a pleasure. All right, this morning we've been speaking to me called the general manager last minute Mara. Now you do know exactly what they offer. Get online, get booking for those people who actually want to experience Kenya for what it is. They say start home and start now. That's why it's only 30 days where you can actually book and 30 days you're actually going there. That's exactly the conversation that we had for you this morning. Now you know last minute Mara. Good. That means that we've come to the end of a conversation this morning. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kege. But guess what? All these conversations, you can actually take a recap of them online at Metropole TV Kenya on Facebook and YouTube at Metropole TV Kenya. Hashtag Business AM. I know you've been asking questions. What we're going to do is actually give these questions later on to Nicole. He's going to handle them later at her own pleasure. Good. I'll see you at 11 p.m. Sorry, 11 a.m. Wow. 12 p.m. 
for Metropole Business Briefs and then later join you at 1pm for Metropole News at 1. Good morning.